Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Profit Tool Belt podcast. Today is a doozy. Today, we're going to talk about making a recession-proof plan for your construction business. And I've got a workbook for you. So there's going to be a workbook that you can download that goes along with that. Now, if you don't have the workbook in front of you, don't worry, because it's an easy visual. It's a square, a square broken into four parts. There you go. I gave it all away. Um, but I'll explain how that works. So even if you're driving or if you're walking the dog or if you're walking around the job site, you'll be able to visualize this pretty easily. You've, you've, you've seen more complicated blueprints than what I'm about to show you. So stay tuned. We're going to be talking about how to recession-proof your construction business, because we don't know, but apparently... They're telling us the a recession's coming. So a recession-proof construction business plan, and there's a workbook that goes along with that. Let's get to the episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Um, today, we're going to be, we're digging into something that has just got a lot of heat around it, a lot of heat, the recession, and talk about the recession. And in a second, you're going to hear my attitude and my approach towards the recession, and you have your own as well. We don't talk politics on this show. Uh, because it's not a show about politics. It's a show about business, the business of the construction business, how to be a profitable trades contractor who has a life. Uh, as you've heard me say, really, as you've heard me repeat that I've heard from you guys, is uh, it's not always about the money. Sometimes I just want to drive a newer truck to own a bigger boat to a nicer cottage on a prettier lake. Whatever you want. That's my goal is to help you get to whatever you want. And so today's episode is called Recession Proof Construction Business Plan, and I put together a workbook. So guys, when I do a monologue, which is just me talking, usually I just do something off the cuff, and, and quite often there isn't a download that goes along with it. And I think looking forward to 2023, that's something I need to change because I know that it's nice to have something to refer back to. So this episode has a workbook. It's pretty simple. It's a you know it's something you, you you'll text me later and I'll send it back to you by email. Um, so pretty simple, but I do want you to have some reference because I'm going to be talking about these pieces of paper. It's actually a quadrant. You know, you can see it in front of you and it's me asking you to go sit down for a coffee just by yourself. Just go have a darn coffee. Like I've said a gajillion times here on the show, uh, put in your headphones, face the wall. Really, I want you to leave the office because I want you to change your environment. So you change your mental headspace. We're going to talk a little bit about mindset here today. And I want you to get in that forward-facing mode. You've heard KT. Uh, KT is a friend of the show. Uh, you've heard me talk to him before. And he really likes the fact that we talk about being a forward-facing business owner. He just happens to be a contractor. That's what I want for you. And the reason I want that for you is because I know it's the path to success. For so many people, that path to success has been kept a secret because people don't share the things I'm sharing here. Really, in my observation, it's because they don't know what they've done to get where they are. They don't have a path. They just sort of made it happen. Whereas from my side, it's about simple systems and process. And, and I, I don't know how to explain it. You know, I've been doing this for 23 years, right? So this recession, yeah, bring it on. We've seen them before. I know how to get through them. And I don't want to sound like uh, I'm not respectful of a uh, change in the economy, but I don't care. The economy is going to go up. The economy is going to go down. I'm going to run my business, my construction business, my contracting business. And I'm going to show you that here today, how to be in charge. You guys have probably heard me talk before about um, the approach of a leader like yourself can take two forms. And I want you to think about this. This is really going to make sense if you're on the coast. Maybe if you're inland, you know, if you're in the middle of Nebraska or Ohio, Iowa, Saskatchewan, it's not going to make as much sense. But Ask yourself right now, as I ask the question, ask yourself in your business, what kind of leader are you? Are you the kind of leader who's the captain of a ship? Is that your leadership style? Or are you more like a lighthouse? Think about who would win in a battle between a lighthouse and the captain of a ship. As a matter of fact, that little thing that I make up or talked about comes from a joke. There's a, a captain of a naval destroyer, the, you know, the crown of the U.S. fleet. And uh, he's sending signals to a ship off in the distance. And he's saying, look, I'm a naval destroyer, alter your course. And the message comes back to us, no, we will not alter our course. And he says, look, he keeps going. He says, look, I'm, we're kind of a big deal here. I'm a naval destroyer, alter your course. And the message that comes back is, you alter your course, we're a lighthouse. And so no matter what, the jewel, the crown of the US fleet has to alter their course. 
because the lighthouse stands firm. We're not talking about the military here. We're talking about your leadership style, the mindset that you take in leading this company. So if there's a recession coming, you can choose to be the captain. I'll show you how to do that. You could choose to be the lighthouse. Happy to show you how to do that. I'm not here to change your style or your approach, but I am here to ask you to make a conscious decision. Do you want to be the captain who's always reactive to the situations around them and who has to change when the market changes, right? What we're talking about here, The let me repeat the title, recession-proof construction business plan and workbook, <laughs> right? Or do you want to be, or are you the kind of leader who's more like a lighthouse? A lighthouse relies on data, information, process, systems, repeatability. That light rotates and it lights up the coastline. And what does it do? It illuminates problems. It can see those problems because it's always shining a light on them. It's the same thing we talk about here on the show. Those of you who work with me one-on-one -on -one or who are in some of our groups, some of you are, are laughing right now because you've heard us talk about this in 10X Built, which is a new program that we've launched. Some of you are already in it. 10X Built, again, goes back to that joke. Um, the B, the L, and the T can stand for business and legacy and time or, you know, whatever, you know, the business side is, but really the joke, the inside joke is it's, I want to drive a nicer, bigger boat on a nicer lake with a newer truck. That's where 10X Built comes from. You guys know I like to have fun, right? 2022 is the year of more, M-O-R-E, right? Just we want more. And so for 2023, I've decided that 2023 is going to be the year of 10 times more. See how I did that? <laughs> so, so for that, we came up with a program called 10X Built. Anyways, the people in that course already know or in the coaching. You're either in the course or you're in the coaching. There's two different things. But the people in that program already know some of these things I'm talking about. We need data. We need information. We need systems. It just brings calm and clarity to you as a business owner. So is there going to be a recession coming? Let's get to that in a second here. Okay. So there's. I want you to imagine while we're having this conversation today on the podcast, I want you to imagine that there's a quadrant in front of you, right? So a square broken into four smaller squares. Uh, look, if you're driving or if you're walking through the shop, or if you're going to a job site, if you're, I don't know, up on a crane, don't worry about taking notes. Get in touch with me after. You can get the download. There's a workbook that I made just for this episode. So send me a note later and uh, I'll just send it back to you. So you don't really have to take notes for today's episode. If you're sitting at your desk, uh, certainly draw a quadrant and actually let me do that. Imagine that some of you are sitting at your desk or you can write, don't do this while you're at an intersection, you know, but if you're in the parking lot of a Starbucks, go ahead and scribble this down. The quadrant looks like this in the top left. I want you to put the word you, Y-O-U, right? Not the sheep, Y-O-U. Um, on the top right, I want you to put my ideal customer. So my perfect customer, you guys have heard me talk about that here before. I'm here to serve my perfect customer. And we're going to dig into that a little bit more. Now let's go to the bottom left quadrant, my profits. What are my profits? P-R-O-F-I-T, right? My profits. And then the bottom right quadrant, think about this in front of you, for those of you who aren't, aren't writing this down, we're actually doing all that work so that we can fill, we can make a list in that bottom right quadrant. And it's just my action plan. My action plan. See, the purpose of this is not just to talk about it. I don't like talking. You know, the reason that I like working with contractors is because you guys get stuff done. You get it in your head, you're going to do something and guess what? You do it. You don't typically care about the weather. You just go do it. I mean, if you're pouring concrete, I guess you have to care about the weather if you're re-roofing, but you know what I mean? Like contractors are just kind of get it done kind of people like me. And I love that. Uh, you talk to some other people in other industries and they do a lot of talking and not a lot of doing. I don't like that. It doesn't resonate with how I do business. So keep in mind the purpose of this, listening to this episode, the purpose of getting this download later is so you can go do it, but you can do it at your own pace. You know, you can certainly do it with me. I'm happy to talk to you. As you guys know, the offer is always out there to talk to you and uh, walk you through it. I'll never leave you hanging. Uh, me or somebody from my team, get on the, get on the horn with you and talk it through. But no problem. But you can also do it on your own. And let me point out, it doesn't matter when you do this. You, once you print this off, or um, I guess once you have the download on your hard drive, keep it. It'll work for 2023. It'll work 10 years from now in 2033. It'll work for your next generation. If your son or daughter is currently nine years old and has no idea that they their path in this life is to take over your business, it'll work for them in 2047. It's just the plan, right? So we're not talking about magic, but what we're talking about is a simple system. It's a repeatable system system. 
Um, and I'm going to dig into that more. So let's do this, guys. All right. Um, got notes in front of me here. So you've for those of you watching this as a YouTube video, you'll see me looking down. That's because I want to make sure I'm doing the right thing in the right order here. So listen, first, let's talk about the recession. Um, is the recession coming? There's a lot of talk about it. I don't care if the recession's coming. It's coming or it's not. There's my answer. I can tell you with 100% certainty it's going to happen or it's not going to happen. There are economic indicators saying that it's going to happen. A very good friend of mine went to a hockey game with him last night. Hey, Mark, if you're listening, thanks for joining me at the game. The Washington Capitals smacked the Vancouver Canucks, which is, of course, what happens to the Vancouver Canucks a lot. Um, but he's very deep in the financial world, and he says there's a lot of consumer debt out there. And that consumer debt is going to be driving a lot of problems in the economy, which relate to the recession. But we've seen that before. The more important indicator to me, and listen, I'm nobody. I'm a dummy, right? I'm not an economist. I don't work for a bank. Oh, God forbid I work for a bank. <laughs> I'd get fired before a coffee break. Um, look at that. I already want a coffee break when I'm working for somebody else. Isn't that funny? Um, the, the recession gets talked about in the media because they need something to talk about. And so the more they talk about it, the more it happens because people start to believe it. People who are not the kind of lighthouse leader, the people who do not look at their own information and data. I want to put a shout out to Alan. Alan, you know who you are down there in Southern part of Texas. Alan and I had a coaching meeting yesterday and we looked at his lead flow. We were talking about the recession, but we look at his lead flow. His leads are still strong. So the top of his business funnel is still rocking and rolling. As a matter of fact, he was pleasantly surprised when we just looked at his annual sales and he's up way more than he thought he was going to be this year. It, however, we're on plan for what we had put together at the beginning of the year, right? But the indicator, the leading indicator or the place of power, because Alan is a lighthouse leader, he can see his numbers. When he starts to see his incoming leads waver, as in go down, okay, now he knows there's a problem. And if he sees it go down over one week, no big deal. Over two weeks, over three weeks, over four weeks, it's a big deal. And that's an indicator that matters to Alan where he is in the southern part of Texas. So I'll ask you, and I've asked you on the show um, before, uh, are you tracking your key numbers in the business? And if you're not, we need to start doing that. Okay, but let's go back to the recession question. Is it coming? Yes or no? Good old Dami does not have the answer. And I don't think you do either. But I'll tell you this, we need to have a plan no matter what. So whether the recession's coming or the weather is, whether the recession isn't, we got to have a plan. Back in the 80s, there was a massive recession, uh, especially where I live. And there was a small framing contractor where I live who went into that recession like every other framing contractor, scared for their lives. But you know what they did? They started running it more and more like a business. And you know, you dial it forward from the 80s. I'm about, about to have my 40th high school reunion, so let's just say 40 years just for rounding, um, they now build high rises and towers, not only here where I live, but all up and down the West Coast and probably other projects I don't know about. They started as framers. As a matter of fact, let me just tell you, they started as Italian immigrants. I don't think they had the benefit, and I say this without any disrespect because I'm an I'm a Italian immigrant myself. My parents are Italian immigrants. I'm first generation they probably had a very similar background to my parents where they just weren't even able to go to school past grade six. And yet multi-billionaires who are, by the way, if you don't even care about the money because you're in business for something else, just look at the economic impact, the social impact they're having, how many people they employ, how many people they house, how many libraries they've built. These guys build libraries for cities. Talk about impact. So is the recession coming? They went through a recession and they came out stronger because they had a plan. Okay, so I want you to have that same plan. So is the recession coming? Yes or no? I, when I say I don't care, it's not that I don't care. It's just a situation and we're going to deal with it. And we're going to deal with it the same way we deal with any other situation. We're going to put together a plan, which is the download I want you to get from today's episode. And, uh, and we're going to put a plan in place. And when that plan has to change, at least we've got a plan to, to change. Right? If you don't have a plan, then you just feel like a leaf getting blown around by the wind and you're never in control. You're going to feel scattered. You're going to feel frustrated. You're going to feel like you're always taking two steps forward and one step back. And that one step back is sinking in sand. And th that's where we get really, really frustrated as business owners. And I've been there, man. I have been there. Uh, sometimes they call it analysis paralysis. You're just stuck. 
I don't want you to be stuck. So let's take the recession question and say, don't know, maybe it's coming, maybe it's not. Even if they said we're in turn, we're we're looking at an upturn in the market, which is going to come after the recession, you still need this business plan. So let's get to it. Um, we talked a little bit about the history of, of uh, recessions. Uh, just really quickly, here's the ones I wrote down. I talked about the one in the 80s that I, that I saw going on around me back in high school. Um, in 2001, there was a recession. 2008, there was a recession. Uh, regionally, I've seen uh, recessions or downturns in the market regarding oil, regarding grain prices, regarding real estate. And yet, and, and by the way, I've been a business coach since two, the year 2000, right? So as of right now, it's just shy of 23 years. And I've been a business coach in up markets and down markets. And guess what? The people who invest in themselves always come out better at the end. It's not time to be chicken little and say that the sky is falling, run for the hills. I mean, actually, I don't mind if that happens because it's going to clean out a lot of the messiness, the fuzzy edges of your contracting world. You know, the guys that are like a handyman with a truck that's just kind of trying to get by. He's not running a professional business like you are. If you're listening to this show, you're either running a professional business or you're trying to run a professional business. So the good part of about a recession, if it comes, is it's going to clean out a lot of that messiness around the edges. Those guys are going to be gone. They just don't, they're not making it now when times are bit, when times are good, they're not going to make it later, right? So we've seen a lot of these before. And I'll tell you, the thing that changes for me as a business coach and in the companies I've built and sold, and only to give you reference, during those last 23 years, while I've been a business coach, I've also built and sold two businesses, quite large. One of them I built to 120 million in sales. It was a family business, myself and my cousin. Uh, we sold that company. And then in that same span of the last 23 years, I also sold another business that uh, I'm not at liberty to say what I sold it for because I'm still getting paid. The beautiful part about selling a business is you get a check for a very long time. Um, uh, but I sold that, uh, I don't know, five, six years ago. So I'm still getting paid on it. But uh, although I can't see the sale price, I can tell you that when I bought it, there were six locations. And when I sold it, I had built it to 237 locations. And I did that during up times and down times, during 2008, during the regional stuff, during all of that, during, heaven forbid, 9-11, all of that stuff. The most horrendous times that our countries and our people have ever gone through, business still continue to move forward for those with a plan, not for people who scream chicken little. So get that out of your head. Be the lighthouse. Start to look at information. Be like Alan. Alan knows his data. He wakes up every morning. He's got lots to do. But the one thing he's confident in is he knows his numbers. He knows his numbers now. And that knowing his numbers allows him to have an eye on the future. Do you know where Alan's going to be at the end of three years, given where he is right now? It's insane. He was just around a million dollars before. We're already brushing up against two million now. The sky's the limit. The sky and the sky's the limit for you as well, right? So that's the history of the recession, whether they come, whether they don't. Lots of clients have gone through them. We'll get through this as well. And when I say that, I'm not admitting there's going to be a recession. I'm just saying we're going to get through whether it's up, down, or flat. But again, if it's going to be up, if it's going to be down, if it's going to be flat, I don't care. You still need a business plan. This is the fastest business plan you can build. I broke it down into four key parts, right? Remember that quadrant. There's you. There is, let me go back and look at my notes to make sure I'm, I want to tell you that quadrant in your mind. There's you, there's um, my client, my ideal client, there's my profits and my action plan, right? So let's get to that. All right, so we need a way forward. The very first thing in the way forward, folks, is mindset. What's going on in, in my head? So for those of you, this is a kind of a funny joke. It's a slightly off color, but not too off color for those of you with kids in the car. Um, uh, let me just say this to you, gentlemen, all of us have a four inch problem. Yep, I don't know who you are. Uh, maybe we've never met, but you have a four inch problem. I have a four inch problem. And some of you are already laughing. You know where I'm going with this joke, but it's not what you think. That four inch problem is the space between my ears. That's the four inches I'm talking about. Until I fix my mindset, I can't fix anything else. And you guys have probably seen this with people in your family, maybe some of your kids. You know, you've, let's say you've got two kids. One's just kind of a positive person and one's kind of a negative kid. And what happens with the kid that's kind of negative is negative stuff just kind of keeps happening. And what happens with the positive kid is positive stuff kind of keeps happening. Now, I don't know if it's your kid or your mother-in-law or your neighbor, but your attitude, my attitude drives my success because I build my own reality. 
how I choose to see things. And so I have to, and you guys can probably see this with me. I'm very careful about what I let enter my mind, right? How did I open this episode? I opened this episode by saying the media is talking about a recession. So guess what? It's going to happen. And let me also say this, I'm going to, this one I know, by the time the media starts reporting that things are on the upswing, guys like Alan, guys like KT, guys like, or people like Alan Barb, people like uh, Colin, uh, people like Ryan, you know, other people that you've heard on this show and other people who are my clients or who've done testimonials on the, on the different websites, they're already going to be on a rocket ride because they didn't wait, right? They're proactively running their business. They have a plan. So no matter what happens, if A happens, they know they can move to B. If B gets blocked, they know they can move to C. But if you don't have a plan, I feel bad for you, which is why I'm doing the episode. You need a plan. That's the, what the download will be. By the way, if you want the download, just uh, I should do this now uh, in case people are listening to this in chunks. I know some of you, you know, between job sites, um, what we'll do is we'll use the keyword business plan. Just send me a text, 604 eight, three, seven, eight, three, six, one, and just use the keyword business plan. And then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll send it back to you by email. So you can have it on your hard drive, just download it, keep it there, print it off. Um, so you've got it right. Okay. Um, okay. The plan, the quadrant, I want you to print this off and I want you to keep it. Now, if you've got a business partner, you can do the, this plan with them, right? It's made so that you can print it. Once you've got it on your hard drive, you can print a thousand copies. If you, it doesn't matter, right? And you can print it again in the future. But if you've got a partner in the business, do this with them. If your spouse wants to be more involved or wants to know what your plan is for the future, or you need somebody there, you know, trusted to walk you through your thought process, share it with them, right? If you've got um, a foreman, a uh, lead hand, uh, uh, a sub-assembly lead who's really a, a growing leader in your company, do this plan with them, right? Feel free to share this in your company so that you are the kind of leader who develops the people around you. It's all yours and you do with it as you please. And, and again, if you're a solo business owner, all the more power to you, print this thing off, go to a coffee shop, sit in the corner, face the corner, put in your headphones so nobody bugs you, grab a coffee and just start working. Just all you need is a couple of minutes to do this thing. It's not going to take forever. It's not the amount of time you put in. It's the quality of the time that you're putting in that matters. And that's really what it is to be a business owner. It's not, you're no longer trading dollars for hours, right? You're trading this mindset thing. So let's get our mind in the right place. All right. So um, if, if you are able to write notes, write this down. If you're not, that's okay. Just remember it. It's a saying I learned way back in another life when I tried to be a real estate agent. I know I can hear the laughing now. It did not work out for me. I, did, I didn't like being a realtor at all, but uh, there was this little old lady. She was so sweet and so kind, you know, the kind of lady who would ask you how you're doing and bake cakes and cookies for the office and just, you know, sort of plodded along. And she was a killer. Like she could close and list houses like nobody's business. She had the greatest attitude. Unfortunately, she's passed now and the world is, is worse off for it. Wonderful, wonderful person. Um, but she used to say, Dominic, action is the antidote for despair. And you know what? She's right. Action is the antidote for despair. You got to take action. So keep that in mind. The whole purpose of this exercise is to get to that bottom right quadrant where you take action. All right. Um, we're looking for actions. We're looking for clarity. We're looking for simplicity. So as we're talking today, as we go through this, and when you get the download, remember that your whole purpose of doing the exercise is to do a little bit of work up in the top left quadrant and then write down an action in the bottom right quadrant. Do a little work in the next quadrant and then go and write down an action. So the whole purpose of the whole thing is you want to really fill that bottom right quadrant, maybe so you need another page, but you're going to have the actions you need to take to get through the recession and have a business plan that works for you for your business, in your city, for your perfect customer, for your perfect client, okay? So keep that in mind. And then at the end of this, you're going to have a ton of confidence. Um, you guys know that I'm a really big fan of military strategy, especially as it comes to business. Um, and one of my favorite authors is, uh, well, I guess he's not an author. He's a military, Chinese military general named Sun Tzu. Uh, and he wrote a book called The Art of War. And I don't know if you've ever had a chance to read it, but it is a brilliant book on negotiating, on sales, on leadership, but he talks about it all, or all of his quotes are because he's a military leader. But here's one of his quotes that I want to leave with you before we jump into things. Uh, this is a Sun Tzu quote. Strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. 
Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. Okay, I'll say it again, right? Strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. So which path do you think I'm taking you down right now? Am I taking you down a path where we have a strategy and tactic laid out? Absolutely. That's why I just said actions in the bottom right quadrant. Those actions are tactics, right? What you're actually going to do. The strategy is the other three boxes. So you've got to grab this download. You've got to have it. Then you've got strategy and tactics. If you go off um, the half cocked, as they say, and you just start, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to buy more advertising. I'm going to double down on, on, on Google AdWords. I'm going to start paying more money to Angie's List. And uh, we're going to uh, hire a new project manager. And I'm just going to muscle my way through it. Frantic. Dude, slow down. Stop. Think. Think. Now is the time to think. If you're a business leader, you get paid to work from the neck up, not the neck down. So let's think, let's plan, and then let's do. By the way, just for a funny joke, if anybody knows the joke about the two bulls on the hill, you can text it to me, 604-837-8361. Um, and then maybe, I don't know how I can share that. It's not very clean, but it's a great joke. Those two bulls on the hill looking down on a herd of cows. That's what we need to be. Think then plan, then do. Don't just go do, 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 right? Um, I wonder how many texts I'm going to get. You guys can tell I spent a lot of time in ranching and agricultural land working with contractors out there because I got a lot of rancher jokes. All right, let's get into this. Um, the U exercise, the top left quadrant, folks. Now, again, if you're driving, I'm going to talk you through this as if you've never seen the workbook. But when you get the workbook, what you're going to have is a series of questions laid out. You're going to print this off. It's easy to print. It's a nice PDF. It all looks pretty and all that stuff. I had Jara do that. And it looks great. But um, it's just going to be a series of questions with an open box. And in that open box, you just hand write what your thoughts are. And by the time you're done, imagine that we're moving from, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using my, I'm Italian, right? I'm using my hands here to explain something. So think of an inverted triangle. We're moving from the very general, from the very broad, all the way down to the pointy tip of the triangle, which now is down in the middle of my chest to the very specific. And that's what these exercises help you do. These are classic coaching exercises that I do when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with clients or that some of you are laughing because you're doing this exact same exercise in the 10X built program. You know, you just, you've seen these before, but what we're doing is we're moving from the general to the specific. And what we're really doing is downloading everything from your brain onto a piece of paper, because once it's on paper, you've got a plan. You're, or you can choose then to be the lighthouse or the captain, but now you've got the choice and you have to act accordingly, right? Um, but the kind of questions are not, you know, it, it's, it, you're not going to need to print off your PL and your balance sheet. What, here's some of the questions. Who are you? Who are you not? What, you know, when you look around the market and you see other people who do what you do, let's say it's roofing or kitchen cabinets, what do you see other people doing in the market that really makes you mad or frustrates you? Or other people are doing in the market that makes everybody look bad, right? And we've seen that before with flooring contractors, especially with roofing. You, oh my goodness, you just see some really horrendous business practices out there. They make you look bad. But if you're not that, then who are you? And we're going to use that information later when we talk about our ideal client. But let me leave that for now. So we really need to define who you are very clearly. That's going to give you a real strong center of confidence. So who are you? Who are you not? Um, there's an exercise to answer the big question. And this is a very important one. How do I download everything that's in my head and get it on paper? And by the way, I'll say this again. You can do this exercise on your own if you're a solo business owner, if you've got a business partner, if your business partner happens to be a family member, uh, if you've got a trusted number two in command who you, who you need to get on board to get through whatever the economy is going to throw at us. So it's a very simple set of exercises where you just answer very simple questions and you fill in the boxes. Pretty nice, pretty simple. And like I said, you can do it at a coffee shop or you can do it at your boardroom table. All right. Now that's the top left quadrant. Now we're going to move to the top right quadrant, which is my perfect customer or my ideal client exercise. So why do we care about the ideal client? Excuse me, I'm going to take a sip of coffee here. Clear my throat a little bit. Can anybody answer this question? Why do we care about our perfect client? And why do I keep going on about it? Why do I focus and obsess and continue to bring up who is your ideal customer? 
Do I continue to focus on it because I don't think it's important or because I think it's critical? It's a foundational element. It is part of the plumb square and level of running a good business, All right? I got to understand who my customer is. Life's too short to deal with customers you don't like. If you have customers right now who give you a headache, who are busting you up on price, who are too far away for you to serve properly, who are never happy with the high quality work you do, um, or they want work that you're not really good at doing or have much interest in doing, then you've got a customer problem. And guess who can solve it? And it ain't the customer. It's not the customer's job. It's your job. It's my job. We've got to fix who our perfect customer is by going to get different customers. That's what we've got to do. So this portion of the exercise is going to walk you through how to define your ideal customer. And it doesn't matter whether you do residential work, commercial, civil, institutional, it doesn't matter. You're going to have your own ideal customer. Because people will say to me, well, Dom, you know, we're an architectural millwork firm. There's maybe five architectural millwork firms in the city. Uh, we all compete with each other for the same work from five GCs or builders. And so we're always just sort of snarling with each other to try and win a job. And it really just comes down to price. So all of this thing you're talking about here is pretty and it's nice and it's cute, but it's BS. To which I will respond, yeah, I think you're full of BS. That, that was not an audio blip. You're full of BS. You've got a head problem. You have not gone out to find more customers. You've accepted the fact that you're only bidding to five GCs and builders. You've accepted the fact that you want to limit yourself and the opportunity for your business. Well, don't do that. If you want to find a way through that, get in touch with me. I'm happy to have the conversation. Totally respectful, of course. But I got to be the guy who tells you, you're full of crap. There. I'll let that sit with you. Some of you are deeply offended are now going to unsubscribe from the podcast. And to you, I say, thank you very much for listening. For those of you who are thinking, oh, I hate this guy, but he might be right. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm not always right, but I'm trying to help. Okay. It comes down to mindset. It comes down to mindset. I'm not going to accept what the world throws at me. I'm either going to be the lighthouse and I'm going to rely on solid data and information and process and systems, or I'm going to be the captain in my business and I'm going to be reactive, which you can still do. You can be reactive and you can move and you can be nimble and quick. That's a strategy. Go do it. But we got to do one of the, one of the two. And so if you find yourself in a situation where you say, Hey, Rubino, all this stuff sounds pretty. It sounds so very nice, you know, but we're a custom shop. We've only got a few customers. I want to challenge you on that. Let's go think about who your perfect customer could be. And, you know, it doesn't matter what trade we're in. Our perfect customer lines up what my tooling is, what my guys are trained to do, and what I make good money at. So if you want to line those three things up, like you're looking down the rifle barrel, that's going to be your perfect customer. Right? There might be some other variations that you need in there if you've got uh, distributorships or um, uh, lines of product or territories that you work within. You know, There's some other things, but at the very bas basic, the very minimum, your ideal customer needs to be what we focus on. Because why would we go focus on customers that suck? Customers that beat me up on price. Customers that I have to drive three hours to get to over the Snoqualmie Pass in the winter. Why? <laughs> why? I mean, I understand that there's good business over there, but you're leaving your family. It's a three hour drive. They're going to be worried all the time. Nobody, I don't think anybody, you correct me if I'm wrong. Again, shoot me a text. If you want your headstone to say, he was a great guy. He worked late a lot. Here lies dad. What a great guy. He worked a lot of overtime. Did, is that what you want your headstone to say? Probably not. Certainly not what I want. So if you're finding yourself dealing with the wrong client in the wrong place for the wrong type of job, the wrong job size, not profitable enough, we can fix it. And thankfully, you're listening to the show. Obviously, you want to, you know, I'm being harsh sometimes for, to, for effect, but I know I'm reaching some of you on that. But I know you want to change because you're listening to the show. The show is all about positive change and reinventing the business while you're running it. I understand that. It's like, it's like fixing an airplane while you're flying it. It can be done, but you got to do things in the right order and you got to be careful what you do first, right? You got to be careful what you do and the tools you use. Um, okay, so we're thinking about our ideal customer. There's an exercise in this section. It's um, easier to see visually, so I won't get into it here, you know, for the podcast where I'm talking about it. But remember, we're looking for actions. There's an easy exercise. Like I said, you're going to answer a few questions. You're going to think about what works regarding the customer, what does not work about the customer. And as you write these things down, remember... You're also going to have a bleed off valve where you're over in the bottom right quadrant, you're going to be writing actions. 
right? You're going to be writing down actions. I want you to start running this company on purpose. I want you to start running this as a forward facing contractor who sees the future, who has data, who has information. Again, like Al, like Ryan, like Barb, like uh, Danielle, like, uh, uh, did I already say Alan? I said Alan and I said Al. And what about Amos? There's two guys named Amos who I know listen to the show. They have the data. They have the information. And once you have the information, you really have the power. They're running the business on purpose. They can make decisions with confidence. You stand a little taller and yeah, you go and you buy a newer truck tow, so you can tow a bigger boat to a nicer lake with a prettier cottage, whatever you want, right? Spend more time with your family. It all comes down to just changing, using some simple systems. For instance, this recession-proof business plan and the workbook, right? You want to have some tool to rely on. It's a confidence builder. It gives you um, something stable to rely on and something to go look back on. If the plan's not working, you just tweak it. All right. Um, I want you to remember this as well. A business, any business, yours and mine, a business exists to solve problems for other people. That's why our business exists. Yours, mine, and everybody's. We get paid to solve those problems. Describe the problem. Go ahead now and describe the problem. What problem do you solve for other people? That's you know, an example of the question that's in this section. So you're going to have a lot of questions with empty boxes. That's what the workbook is. And again, work through it at your own pace. Print it off. Just leave it on your desk and get to it when you can. Noodle with it when you just need a break. Or leave the office. Go to a coffee shop and, and spend some quality time working through this. All right. Let's move down or let's move now to the bottom left quadrant where we're going to be talking about your profits or in this, you'll, the way you'll read it is my profits. Um, the, actually, the best quote on this comes from Al. Um, Al is a remodeler in Winnipeg. Um, and we did this exercise, the exercise you're going to learn about in this quadrant. Al did this exercise. Anybody who's worked with me for any amount of time has done this exercise. People who've just called me and said, Hey, Don, can we have a half hour on the phone? I've told them to go do this exercise because there's value in it. It's a foundational building block, what you got to do. But Al's one of Al's best quotes was, um, we did the exercise, uh, and I found out I lost $3,400 on a job. I like the lady that we did the work for, but I don't like her $3,400. And so what happened to Al, Al's in Winnipeg, Saskatchewan, by the way, which is, for those of you who don't know where that is, it's north of North Dakota. It's pretty cold, uh, but a beautiful place, fantastic people. If you want to find the friendliest people in the world, Winnipeg's it. Really super nice people. And Al is one of those guys, but he's also a very sharp businessman. Just happens to be a renovator right? Sharp. But he was happy when he found that 3,400 bucks, because like a lot of us, all he needs to know is that he's identified the problem and he will find a solution. He's a doer. Al is a doer. He goes and he does stuff. But if he doesn't know there's a problem, he doesn't or can't take action, which makes sense. So if it's a multiplication problem and it's one times zero, you get zero. Anything to multiply by zero is zero. But when Al knows there's a problem, he can go fix it. And so he found this $3,400 loss. So please remember, he just did a fantastic renovation, beautiful reno for a very nice person. Not only did he not make money, he lost money. So he's below zero. He's now paying out of his own pocket, 3,400 bucks. You know, I'm recording this in November. Today, the day I'm recording this is November 30th. Largely that's irrelevant because you can listen to this at any point, but just so happens Christmas is coming. The reason Al's running this business is for profit. The reason Al's running this business, employ other people. That 3,400 bucks is gifts he can't put under his own tree. It's got to come out of somewhere and guess who pays for it? You and I as the business owner. You and I as the business owner. 3,400 bucks he found in this exercise that you're going to do in the bottom left quadrant of this workbook. So make sure you get it. And again, for those of you who are driving and in and out of the episode, make sure you send me a text with the keyword business plan and uh, and I'll send you the workbook, okay? Oh, sorry, the cell phone, 604-837-8361. Just say business plan. Um, anyways, he found it and he, you know, he said, look, I paid to do that lady's kitchen. I don't want you paying to do somebody's kitchen or fence or roof. I don't want you paying to do somebody's foundation or frame or repair, renovation, pool house, tiki bar. I don't want you paying for that. 
you need to be making the right kind of money for doing what you're doing, right? I don't want you paying out of pocket to build a beautiful lobby of a brand new high rise building. That should be a job that you are profitable at. And that's why you, you know, obviously listen to the show or talk to me. Um, the goal of that section again, actions. And so now let's get to the action section. By now you've got a pretty full act when you do the work, right? You've got a pretty full set of actions. As a matter of fact, some of you just in listening here today have decided to take some sort of action in your business. Do an exercise with me. Think about the action that you've already decided to take based on what you heard here today. Because you know your business better than I'm ever going to know it, right? Think about how fixing that problem that you've identified is going to impact your business. Is it going to make you more money or is it going to save you money? So it's either going to, you know, an arrow up or an arrow down. If it's an arrow up, how much is it going to make you? And if it's going to save you money, that would be an arrow down. How much is it going to save you in the business? Could it save you a hundred dollars? Do you, have you identified a problem just in today's episode that could save you a hundred bucks? Okay, that's good. So that's a pretty good ROI for listening to a free podcast. You made a hundred bucks. But now let me turn it around on you. Have you found an opportunity in your company where you could make a change that would save you a hundred bucks a day in operations? And if you're open 250 days a year, let's do the math. What's the impact of that? We've got, I'm going to use the calculator because I want to make sure I don't do it wrong. A hundred, hundred, that's two zeros times 250 days. Now I'm assuming you work 50 weeks a year because we've got Christmas and Thanksgiving and, you know, just vacations, but I'll just say 50 weeks and we work five days a week. So that's 250 days a year. So there you go. You just saved $25,000. That's the kind of action we're talking about. Right. So that's what you're, that's the bleed off valve, the steam valve in that bottom right corner. I want you to be finding those actions. If there's a recession coming, wouldn't it be handy that you already found $25,000 in savings? For those of you watching the YouTube video, you can see I'm holding up my handy dandy phone calculator. There you go. Just saved you 25 grand. It's laying on the floor of your business. Those of you who uh, were with us when we did the Find and Fix Your Eight Profit Leaks programs, which is now you know morphed into the 10X Built program, um, there's eight profit leaks in any construction business. Our job is to go find them and fix them, just like Al. Just like KT, like call it like Barb, everybody, right? Um, hey, and by the way, if this $25,000, which came from finding a way to save a hundred bucks a day in the business is of value to you, then hang on. Why don't we then challenge ourselves again in the bottom right quadrant of the business plan? You're going to have the answer, whatever your answer is, you're going to have the answer for the other part of the question, right? We just figured out how to save a hundred bucks a day. Now let's go make an extra $100 a day. Is there a way for your business? This is a coaching question. So think about this. Think about it while you're driving. Think about it if you're walking the dog. Think about it, whatever you're doing. Is there a way for you to make an extra $100 a day, $100 per day in your company? Is it job site efficiency? Is it just being better at estimating? Is it capturing those change orders? Is it uh, reducing waste, wasted efforts, wasted time? Is there something in the office that's that could be done faster, smoother, better? Just think about it. It's only a hundred bucks. Is there something you can do different in your business that would make you $100? And I'll do the same math. If you can now figure out a way through this action plan, through the business plan, how to make another hundred bucks a day, well, multiply that by 250 working days a year and you've got another 25 grand. So there you go. The impact, the mindset, the change, the decision you made today to listen to this podcast and hopefully to download the workbook, that decision is a forward-facing decision that a business person makes, a forward-facing proactive business person. And what you get is the benefit. So now your benefit is you just found 50 grand in your business, 50 grand. So you want a recession? Bring it on. I hope the rest of your competitors are not listening to the episode. That's one little exercise, tiny. That's a minor challenge that I put to you a minor business coaching challenge, and we're not even face-to-face. -face. Imagine what we could do, by the way, if we actually did get a chance to work face-to-face. -face. That'd be fantastic. But there's 50 grand right there, $50,000. And by the way, if you choose not to take action on those two things, don't tell your wife you listen to the episode. <laughs> She's going to be pissed. But that's what we're talking about here, right? So listen, let's go back to the title because I'm going to start to wrap this up. This is a recession-proof construction business plan. 
right? A business plan to recession-proof your construction business. There's a workbook that goes along with it. Make sure you download the workbook. You got to have that to go through with this because I didn't go through all the questions. That would be very boring. But when you see the questions, it's just going to make sense. The questions always go from the very general to the very specific, right? Think about an inverted triangle, right? Think about that inverted triangle. We're trying to move down that scale because the actions that pop out of the bottom are the actions that are the money makers, the time savers, the, the things that help you have a safer, better work site, the things that help you get a better customer who wants the products and services you deliver, right? So it's all part of the process. Uh, all right, let's wrap it up there. I really appreciate the fact that you've joined in. I hope you and your family had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And now we're looking forward to the Christmas and New Year's season. Uh, I've got a special treat coming for Christmas, so stay tuned for that. I think you guys will get a hoot out of that. Uh, and listen, if you like the podcast and you get value from it, tell a friend. You know, um, I love having you as a listener. I love having you out there putting these things in place. I like hearing from people. You know, the the people I work with are the people I hear from on the show. I don't even mention the emails we get. You know, I'm looking at the smiling face of Corey here, and I've got another. Uh, uh, I've got another one up here from Sam and Elijah. Um, these are just screen captures from meetings I've just had in the last couple of weeks, right? It, it's fantastic. So I know that people out there are making these changes. Other contractors are already using these tools. They're already using them. They've been using them for years and I didn't invent them. I'll tell you first, I'm not the guy who invented these. I packaged them up and I delivered them so you can use them. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Let's wrap it up here. Uh, I'll, we'll go to the outro next. And then don't forget at the very end is questions and answers with Dom. Love to have you uh, playing a part in that. So if you do have questions or comments, go ahead and leave a, a question there. We'll talk about it later in the episode. Um, and thank you. Listen, one more thing. If you want the workbook, the workbook is ready to go. I'll, I'll send it to you by email. You just got to text me. The text uh, is six or send me a text at 604 604- 837-8361. And then just use the keyword business plan and then we'll send it back to you. All right. Thanks for checking in, folks. Let's get to the outro. Well, well, well. How did I do? Did I get through? I'm worried that I offended some of you. It's just going on in the back of my mind. And I guess actually, if I've done that, if I've popped this this hot ball bearing or hot marble into your ear and I'm letting it roll around your head. There's a little bit of singeing, a little searing, a little bruising. I suppose that's okay. I learned best when my coach or my trainer is just really blunt and honest with me. And so if, if today something I said offended you or really got in your face, just know that it comes from a place of love and respect. There's no way you'd be listening to this show unless you've already been through trial by fire and you're looking for solutions. So I'm here to bring you those solutions. And sometimes maybe I don't use the right language or phrasing to, to try to get it across, but it all comes through from passion. I just, I just want you to, I want you to do it. I want you to have what I know works, what I've seen other people do. You know, how do you turn a $400,000 business into a $900,000 business into a $3 million business? Well, you do it a step at a time, but you don't do it randomly. You have to have a plan. So that's what I wanted to show you today. It's a simple quadrant. Anyways, um, before we get to questions and answers with Dom, if you want to download this, I know I said it a couple of times in the episode, just shoot me a text and just say business plan in your text message. And then myself, somebody from my office, will get that back to you as soon as we can. Okay. If we're in a meeting, uh, we might not respond to your text right away, but because uh, sometimes we get a ton of these requests and it'll take us a day or two to sift through them, but just be patient. Um, if you don't get it fast and you need to be in a meeting, uh, maybe you're going to go through this with a business partner or family member. Uh, let us know that we'll try to prioritize it. But always shoot me a text. That's how it all starts. And that's how you get the download. Uh, one more time. I know I said it a bunch, but the cell phone is 604-837-8361. Please text me. Just say business plan and we'll shoot it on over. All right, folks, let's get to questions and answers with Dom. Thanks. Hey, everybody. Welcome to questions and answers with Dom. Today, we're taking another question. For, actually, we're taking it from two places. First, it came up in a coaching meeting. And second, I turned that coaching meeting agenda piece into a post on the Facebook group, which is the contractor strategy group on Facebook. If you're not a member, you should join that. Um, the question was, how do I figure out my marketing budget? You know, we all know that we need to market, especially if we want to go after better customers. If we want the juicy, profitable deals. We can't just rely on a hope and a prayer to get them. We've got to go marketing. You've got to go to the right neighborhoods or the right markets. Um, uh, you, you have to go after the right accounts, not all jobs are created equal. So we have to go after the best jobs. Today, we're going to answer that question for you. 
how to find our marketing budget. So stay tuned. I'll record the answer now. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Questions and Answers with Dom. This is the answer part of the whole process. Uh, the question that was asked came from the contractor strategy group. How do I figure out my marketing budget? In, in actuality, the question really came from one of my coaching meetings with a client. He does, uh, this was from somebody that does kitchen and bathroom renovations. So a little bit of demolition, a little bit of drywalling, a little bit of electrical, a little bit of plumbing, a little bit of HVAC, a little bit of tiling, a little bit of cabinet work. It's a little bit of everything, right? So anyways, we, we started talking about getting better customers, the juicy, profitable deals. You can't just hope and pray they're going to come through the door. We have to go get them. Now, in order to do that, we've got to do marketing. Well, how do we do marketing if I've never had a marketing budget? How can I set the money aside when I'm not used to spending that money? And we'll get into where to spend the money later. Maybe if one of you has a question about where's the best place for me to market to grow my contracting or construction business, you should post that question here. You just go to speakpipe.com forward slash ask Dom. And then I answer the question for you here in this segment. See how that works? That would be fantastic. Maybe I'll just leave that out there for somebody to pick up. Uh, we really do need your, your questions so that I can answer them here. This is working great, actually, uh, pulling them off of the contractor strategy group because there's always great questions post there, posted there. But if you've got a question like the one I just posed, how do I spend my marketing money? How do I know where to spend it? How do I know where to invest it? How do I know if radio is better than direct mail or should I get a new website or SEO? I can answer that question for you. Sure. I deal with that question. I don't want to say all day long, but a lot of the days, a lot of times. So we can get to that if you want. But listen, right now, let's figure out how to find our marketing budget. I have it broken down into seven steps. Now, these aren't my seven steps. These are the seven steps that any growing wise company that's forward facing would follow. We want to keep it as simple as possible. So this is the SOP to figure out your marketing budget from a business coach who only works with contractors and construction businesses. So take it for what it's worth. Here's the answer. Number one, find your average profit per job from your EOJ or your dashboard. If you're new to the show, you haven't heard of the term EOJ yet. That stands for end of job report. It's kind of like an autopsy on the past job. I know you're working on the Hernandez job now, but how did the Smith job do? I get it. It can be boring to go back and look at a job that you just did, but you learn a lot by looking at it so that you can make better decisions in the future. It just is what it is. Number one, find your average profit per job from your end of job report or your dashboard. Okay. Now, once you've got that as averages, so you're going to have to do a couple jobs. You're starting to tease together some numbers here, right? Number two, agree or decide to yourself how much of that profit we can divert into buying a new customer. And look, let me be honest about this. Marketing is about buying customers. I know it's wonderful to get them for free. I know it's wonderful to get them by referral and word of mouth. And lots of you say, Dom, we do all of our business by referral and word of mouth. And then later on in the conversation, you'll also say, yeah, we're not making money on our deals. And we have lousy customers. Yeah, you're caught in a loop. We got to get you out of that loop. And that's why we need to get you into marketing. So you go to better neighborhoods with better jobs, that are juicy and more profitable. And again, I'm speaking in residential terms. It's the same if you're doing commercial work, if you're doing civil, institutional, or industrial work. You have to go after the best jobs proactively. You can't just wait for them to fall on your doorstep, right? So number one, find your average profit per job. Number two, agree on how much of that profit we can divert into buying a new customer. So now you know your profit level, you know how much of that profit you're willing to invest back into the market to buy another customer. Number three, very, very clearly identify who your best customer is and what's your best kind of job. Okay, so who is your best customer and where's your ideal job or what's your ideal job? Number four, decide on the marketing strategy based on budget, timing, and other factors. So if you only had a dollar to spend, where would you spend that dollar, right? This is always a challenge we have. And listen, I will be the first person to tell you, I actually don't know the answer. The market knows the answer and the market will respond. So if you do a direct mail piece and somebody buys because of your direct mail piece, well, we have kind of a sniffer out there that says direct mail works. If we've been running pay-per-click ads on Google for six years and we don't get a response, we're not doing pay-per-click right or pay-per-click's not working for us, right? So you have to listen to your marketing. You have to do a lot of testing and measure. Okay, so decide on your marketing strategy. Obviously, that's something I do a lot of, uh, but I won't get into that right here. Number five, put the strategy in place. Number six, measure your results. And number seven, rinse and repeat.
That's it. Those are the seven steps to figure out how to find a marketing budget and not just a marketing budget for today, but set a marketing budget that you can use again and again in the future. Because as you put that system in place, you'll have a marketing budget of X at the end of this month. At the end of the month, at the end of the next month, you'll have X plus one and then X plus two and then X plus three, X being a dollar, right? So right now you look at it and you go, well, that's pathetic. I only have a dollar to invest. Yes. Okay. You've got a dollar to invest. But at the end of next month, you're going to have a dollar ten, and then a dollar twenty, and then a dollar thirty, and then a dollar forty. And before you know it, you're going to have eight hundred dollars in that account. You're going to have eight thousand dollars in that account. And as you keep doing that, and you realize that every customer you get is going to pay for your next customer, you build that into your profits. This is something obviously that I, I teach the people that we work with here. And we want to keep that moving forward. One day you'll have an eight hundred thousand dollar marketing budget, but it doesn't start until you start today by setting aside that dollar right now. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed questions and answers with Dom. If you have questions that you want answered, leave them here. Just go to speakpipe.com forward slash ask Dom, and then I'll answer your question. Have a great day, folks. Thanks.